I went ahead and skipped all of the boring parts so you didn't have to watch me iron on my backing onto any of these. But I have a fusible fleece backing on the outer pieces and then I have the um, interfacing already ironed onto my applique pieces. So we're ready to go with that. Now, first thing we're gonna do is get our applique pieces onto our main outer body. So the, uh, what I recommend is to take your pattern piece and actually cut out the markings that I had on the piece itself. So you can use it as a guide to line it up and everything's you know, precisely where it's supposed to be. And let me tell you, one of my favorite tricks with using anything with applique or um, you know, tricky fabrics, I love to use a washable glue stick and instead of pinning sometimes, I will just uh, glue it into place and then that way um, it doesn't move while I am sewing. Of course, I have that off a little bit, but it doesn't um, hurt the fabric or anything on top of that. So it kind of just holds everything down for you. It's kind of my little cheater way of doing things. Um, I know a lot of sewists that like to use this trick too, so it's pretty, pretty great. So there's one item placed and then we've got the small toes. And the larger one. I'm just gonna flip this over. You can tell that I use random scrap paper when I <laughs> print patterns. Huh? And so here is the smaller toe and the larger one. And everything's in place. And I'm going to go applique stitch around all of these pieces. We've got it all appliqued on there. I like to use uh, what's, I think, I believe it's a ladder stitch. You can see, I just like the look of it. You can zigzag stitch around it. You can pretty much use anything that you like as long as it attaches it. Um, yeah, so that part's done. I think that is the hardest or the most tedious part of this whole project. Otherwise, it's super easy from here on out. So uh, with your main, like your front paw piece facing up, you wanna place your other outer piece right sides down so they're facing each other. And then we are going to be sewing around the entire outer edge with the exception of this, we're leaving the top open because how else will you stuff cute bones and treats for your puppy and or your or your kitty inside of it? So again, we're gonna go all the way around. And what I wanna remind you, and I'll show you once I'm done, these points right here, you wanna take a full half inch seam allowance. So you really wanna come up into this and down and up into this, and then that way you get this really crisp, clean, actual defined point. It's super important, I think, when you're doing this. So again, all the way around this whole thing. So you can see I have sewn all the way up into these points. I got half an inch seam allowance from here to here, all the way around. And then that way, when we go to turn this out, it's gonna be so much cleaner and defined. You're gonna want to take a pair of scissors and cut as deep into these points as you can without clipping through any seams. And then if you have a pair of pinking shears like these, I would highly recommend taking them and especially around all of the curved edges, cutting. So when we turn, especially because we've got this thicker, um, the fusible fleece, it makes 
it just makes it look a little nicer when you when you turn it all right side out. You're witnessing my left-handedness with scissors. People ask about left-handed scissors all the time. I grew up using right-handed scissors, so I actually am terrible at cutting with left-handed scissors. I just learned all the pressure points of it with the right-handed tool. It's a right-handed world, you know, and just a lefty living inside of it. So here we go. Looks like I missed some. Okay. And then we can turn this right side out. Stick your hand in there and just make sure all these curves show up nice and neatly. Press everything out. And we are rocking and rolling. Look at us. So we are going to do the same thing with the lining pieces that we just did with the outer piece. We've got two with the right sides facing each other and we are going to just sew along this entire edge, making sure that we get this half inch seam allowance all the way up into all these points. And here we go. We will do exactly the same as we did before. I'm gonna clip into these corners so they turn nicely. Grab our pinking shears. You can also just trim it with regular scissors if you want. I just prefer what it does uh, for the pinking shears. And voila! Now we're going to keep this one the way that it is when we pulled it off of our sewing machine. So we're gonna keep it with wrong sides out, right sides are together, and keep this one right side out. We're gonna stuff it inside. And I like to just stick my hand in there so I can make sure I've got everything lined up where it should go. And get this top edge aligned properly. And we are so close to the end. Can you taste it? <laughs> so we're gonna work on our, the tab that hangs. And so we take this piece, and we are going to fold it and press it with wrong sides together along the long edge. So we get a nice seam. Once it's pressed, we will open it back up and we are going to fold the outer raw edge towards the middle and press it. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Fold to the middle and press it. So we end up with a completely enclosed piece. The last thing we're gonna do is run a straight edge stitch right down this double folded edge. So we're gonna create just a little tab that hangs. We've got it all sewn. We're just gonna fold it in half and meet the raw edges to each other. And then grab our stocking piece and make sure that these seams are aligned at the center, at the sides, sorry. And we're just gonna put this barely off, off center, barely towards the back. So we're gonna align this sewn edge right behind the seams on the side here. Just right behind. We're gonna clip it. You see that? So when it flips up, it's just barely to the back. It's not middle back, it's just barely to the back. Um, and then we're gonna go give this a little basting stitch so it stays in place. So we're gonna set that aside for now. Our last step is to get the cuff together. So open your piece up 
with the right side facing up and you're gonna fold it with the short edges meeting each other. And then we're going to fold it with the long edges meeting each other. So we've got a double fold. We've got a fold here, we've got a fold here. It's raw edges up here and raw edges along the side. We're going to, with a half inch seam allowance, sew a straight stitch just down this one side. See, we're sewn, we've got a fold over here, we've got a fold over here. I'm going to just trim that seam allowance so it's not so bulky. And then all we do is we're gonna flip it right side out. So you just kind of flip it through everything. Here's your seam. Here's one fold and then your other folds are opening up. And you've got the makings of your cuff. Pretty spiffy, huh? So our last step is to stick this inside of your stocking match this seam allowance or seam with this side seam and then just match it up all the way around Make sure it's all nice and straight And we are going to sew around this entire top edge using half inch seam allowance, just completely all the way around. We've got it sewn. We're just going to reach in, grab your cuff, pull it up, and then fold it down over towards the body. Kind of get everything straightened out here. And you're complete. Now go hang it on your fireplace, wherever you hang your stockings, step it with all the little furry friend treats and uh, you know, let them think that it's from Santa when it's really from you. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoy this. I'm really excited to see everything that you've made. Um, yeah, happy holidays and I'll see you soon.